Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to look at example two in section 5.5. So in our previous video, we summarized the strategies for integrating a rational function by showing three different scenarios we might be in for the denominator function and showing what partial fractions we want to write out to rewrite the initial fraction we are given. So in this video, we're going to look at several examples for how to write out the partial fraction decomposition. So we're not actually going to solve for these constants. So this is really the, the straightforward and fun part once we really get into it. OK, so let's take a look. So in our first fraction, 3x over x plus 1 times x minus 2 squared, let's first just identify what scenarios in this list of three that we are in. OK, so one of our terms in the denominator is x plus 1 which is just a single linear factor. So this would be in this first scenario. Now our second term contains x minus two squared. So we're still looking at a linear term, but we're repeating it twice. So that means we're in the second scenario for that second term in our denominator. So this means for that first term, we're gonna have a fraction of the form a over x minus c, and for the second part, we're going to have two fractions where the denominator, we'll see, builds on each other or builds on itself. OK, so let's go ahead and write those out then. So for that first x plus 1, that will give us the fraction a over x plus 1. So one linear term, very straightforward there. And then in this next term, x minus 2 squared. Again, that means we'll be in the second scenario. So that means we're going to have a fraction of the form b over x minus 2 plus c over x minus 2 squared. And now we can leave it at that. Since we've addressed each part of the denominator and wrote out the corresponding fractions that we need to do in order to represent those parts when we carry out the fraction decomposition. So for part A, we're done. This is it. This would be the partial fraction decomposition. All right, let's now look at part B. All right, so for part B, let's again start by identifying which scenario we are in for each component of that denominator. So this first part, x plus 1, that's just one linear factor. So we use that first scenario, so I'll say 1. Here, our second part, x minus 2 cubed, we're using a, a linear factor, but repeated three times. So we're in the second scenario. So what would that look like? So that would look like our partial fraction decomposition would be a over x plus 1 for the first part. And then for the second part, we would need three different fractions. So they look like b over x minus 2 plus c over x minus 2 squared plus d over x minus 2 cubed. So we've addressed each part of that denominator. So our decomposition, our fraction decomposition, would look like this. So notice the numerator has nothing to do with how we are setting up those fractions. OK, now let's look at part C. OK, again, let's first identify what scenario we're in for each component here. So x squared plus 1 is our first expression in that denominator. So notice the x has a 2 on it, which means the quadratic function or a polynomial degree 2. So that would put us in scenario 3 above. Let's erase some work here. So we're in scenario 3 here. And we should just check that this x plus two, x squared plus one is not reducible. In some cases, we can rewrite this quadratic as a product of two smaller polynomials. For example, recall a difference of squares. So something like x squared minus one can be written like x plus one times x minus one. And if you want to do a quick check about why that is, please pause the video and foil this out. And you'll see what happens, that this is in fact true. But we can also check that this 
x squared plus one does not factor down anymore, so it's irreducible, which means that we're in that third scenario. So this would be scenario three. Then our second term here is just a x minus two, which is just one single linear factor, so that's scenario one. So let's write out what the partial fraction decomposition would look like for each component. So we're in the case three for x squared plus one, and notice we only have one of these factors. We're not repeating this factor with some exponent. So that means we're in the version of scenario one for this quadratic denominator. So that means we would have one fraction, the denominator would be x squared plus one, and the numerator, rather than being just a constant, would be a constant ax plus b. So it'd be a linear term in the numerator. All right, so that takes care of that first part. And now the second part, we're just in a nice old simple scenario one. So that would look like c over x minus two. So our solution to the decomposition would be this, ax plus b over x squared plus one plus c over x minus two. So a quick note on the constants that I'm using. So I'm just using capital letters, starting with A, working through the alphabet. Feel free to stick with your favorite letter. Mine happens to be N. So you could use like N, minus, N sub one, N sub two, N sub three, or whatever, whatever you prefer. Okay, so we have just two more here. So let's look at part D. So part D, we first are going to identify the forms of the denominator. So here, x squared minus 9. So let's check if we can reduce x squared minus 9 any further. So notice that x squared is a square. It's x times x. And 9 is also a square, 3 times 3. So when we're in the situation of a squared minus a squared, that becomes the terms added and then subtracted together. Let's go ahead and do a quick check of this. Actually, let's erase that. And we're going to check it in the general form. So I'm going to start here, and I'm going to show that that's equal to a squared minus b squared. So to do that, we FOIL. So we multiply the first, which is a squared. Outsides, a times b, a times negative b. So it would be minus a b insides plus ab and last, so negative b squared. So notice what cancels the a and the b, the ab rather cancels out, and we're just left with a squared minus b squared, which is what we claimed that this product was equal to. So what we have is a difference of squares here. So we're in that situation where we can actually reduce this quadratic further. So what would that look like for us? Well, our terms are not a and b, they are x and three. So this would actually become x plus three times x minus three. So before continuing the fraction decomposition, I'm gonna rewrite this in its reduced form. So this would become x plus three times x minus three times x minus two. Okay, so now let's start here with what we just rewrote our initial fraction as. So now let's identify all of the components in the denominator. So here we have a linear term, not repeated, linear term, not repeated, linear term, not repeated. So we're just in scenario one for each component of that denominator. So this would look like a sub one over x plus three, that takes care of this first term, plus a sub two over x minus three, takes care of this next term, plus a sub three over x minus two. So our solution for our decomposition would look like this. Awesome, and again, notice, I had no concern about the numerator here. That doesn't affect that I'm working out some unknowns in the numerators of my 
partial fractions. All right, we're on the home stretch now. We're just looking at part E. So before continuing the video, I encourage you to pause at this moment and reflect on this problem and see if you can set up those partial fractions on your own. Then when you're ready, let's take a look together. So let's first identify those expressions that we have in the denominator. So in first, we just have x squared. So notice this one's kind of a little interesting because it could look to us like we just have a, con a linear term squared, or it could look like a, rash a quadratic x squared. So how we treat it is like a linear, like a repeated linear term. So that means this first x squared would go into the second scenario. And now the next term, x squared plus 1, this is an irreducible quadratic, and we're repeating. So this would mean we're in the third scenario, but we're going to follow the pattern of the second scenario because we're repeating. So let's work that out together. So again, using that second scenario where we're having a repeated linear term, that means we're going to have a fraction a over x plus, and we'll call this a1, plus a2 over x squared. So that second form, we have that linear x, linear x, but we have two different fractions to account for the repeat of the x. So then the next part, we have a repeated quadratic. So now the numerator will look like b, we call it b1x plus b2, again, because we're quadratic here over x squared plus 1 plus b3 squared, sorry, b3x plus b4 all over x squared plus 1, now squared. So notice why this falls in the second type of the third scenario. Third scenario, we have a quadratic, so that means we put the x plus constant in the numerator. So we see that bx plus b, b3x plus b4. But the denominator then is that quadratic to one power, and then to two powers. Okay, so our final solution for this decomposition would look like this sum of fractions. And again, I just want to emphasize the use of the notation here. I could have used a, b, c, d, E, F, I could have used N, A, T, not another A, so W, J, whatever. It's not important what numbers or letters you use here. Sometimes it is helpful to be consistent, so like always using A, B, C, D, if you like, or always using a constant letter with indices on the sub. All right, great work working through these uh, example two. I hope this gives you some more confidence for how to set up these partial fractions. Keep up the hard work.